everyone. Thank you for joining this session. This will be your last session today, and I hope you enjoy it in the next 30 minutes. My name is Hang, and I'm a software engineer from Instacart. Today, I'll be sharing how we at Instacart have built um, scalable and robust metrics infrastructure. To begin with, I'll briefly introduce our business and give you an idea about why this topic is important for a grocery delivery company. As many of you know, Instacart is the leading online grocery platform in North America. Beyond our core business, we also have a thriving ads business that helps brands connect with customers via targeted advertising. My team focuses on measuring the performance and the impact of these ads and providing valuable insights to our clients and stakeholders. We are a product, we are a product team and also a data infra team. Here is a quick overview of what we will be covering today. We will start with the common challenges in building reliable and scalable business metrics. Then we will discuss how a metric store can address some of these issues. We will explore incremental processing and compare it to other processing methods. Next, we will touch on the importance of testing and monitoring. Finally, we will look at a case study on user eligibility calculation before opening the floor for questions. Here is the list of challenges we are facing when building metric business metrics. From a high level, we divide them into three categories. The consistency, scalability, and reliability. And I'll explain how to address each of them in detail. Consistency is a significant challenge for us. For a single business metrics, definitions can vary from team by team when being implemented. And this leads to inconsistencies in data. Different teams may rely on different data sources when building metrics. For example, when calculating a metrics related to sales data, one team may use order data, while another team may use delivery data. So there can be out of stock and replacement happening in the shopping. So sales metrics built from these two data sources will not be consistent. In addition, Cloning and editing metrics without proper controls introduces errors. And inconsistency policy enforcement can lead to compliance issues and inefficiencies. Addressing consistency is crucial for reliable metrics. To tackle the consistency issue, we use a metric store. A metric store is a centralized computing and storage system for metrics. It serves as the single point of truth for both definition and data. This ensures consistency across teams and applications. Data in the metric store is reusable, optimized for efficient computation, and allows for low latency retrieval. This centralization, this centralization simplifies data management and ensures that everyone is working with the same quality of data. In this diagram, the upper part represents the old architecture. So a single matrix can be used by multiple teams, like analytics, reporting, and machine learning services. With this design, data team provides a normalized data size, and downstream consumers build the metrics by themselves and this leads to the inconsistency issues we just described. With the metric store architecture, predefined metrics are computed and stored at a single place and then shared by the multiple downstream consumers. In this way, we make sure the metrics used for reporting, analytics, and machine learning services are always consistent. Scalability is another challenge for computing business metrics. Traditional batch processing with a static lookback window doesn't scale well as data volume increases. This also leads to redundant reprocessing, 
wasting both time and computational resources. Moreover, slow processing delays insights and impacting timely decision making. As data continues to grow, finding scalable solutions it becomes essential. To address scalability, we adopt incremental processing and let's compare it with batch processing and real-time processing. Batch processing accumulates large volume of data and then does the calculation. It has moderate to high latency depending on the data volume. It's usually straightforward to implement. In contrast, real-time processing processes data as it arrives. Therefore, the latency is always pretty low. However, as a trade-off, the real-time system always involves high complexity for implementation and maintenance. Incremental processing provides a balanced approach in between. It only processes new and changed data. The latency is low to moderate depending on how often we process the data. It allows us to scale effectively while maintaining reasonable complexity and latency. In our company, we have very few use cases that rely on real-time metrics. So incremental processing is the best fit for our scale and latency needs. Here is a diagram showing incremental how incremental processing minimizes data reprocessing. The four blocks on the top represents data on four consecutive days. In a batch processing solution, data is processed at the end of each day, and all the data in the past needs to be reprocessed when generating the metrics. The volume keeps increase in each run. The middle one is an improved batch solution with a sliding window. It reprocesses data on the last day to handle late arrival events and to ensure completeness. The last one on the bottom is not that clear, but it represents the incremental processing. It processes data from the last checkpoint, which ensures completeness and also minimizes the reprocessing of data. This leads to a faster processing speed and lower infer cost. And the, the improved scalability facilitates complex metric calculation like cumulative metrics. Now, let's discuss some implementation strategies with Databricks. The first one would be structure streaming and checkpoint. It allows exact once processing, so no actual cost cost and effort is required to handle late arrival data. One example of, this use, of the use cases is flattening JSON files from input data streams into a structured table. This process involves converting nasty JSON data from upstream events into a flight tabular format, making it easier to analyze and query. Since upstream events can arrive out of order, designing a smart lookback window logic to ensure completeness is a non-trivial task. So in this case, structured streaming and checkpoint provide a straightforward way to make sure that every event is processed exactly once. And the next one is change data feed. In a stateless job, it allows us to only process new and change data from upstream. For example, if we have a job that does data enrichment for an upstream table, we can just read CDF as the input instead of designing a complicated lookback window against the input table. And in a stateful job, where we need to maintain a certain level of coherence between consecutive rows in the output table, we can still use CDF to identify earliest change data from the input table and this will help minimize the processing window in each run. Reliability is another critical challenge. Metrics are generated at different places and sometimes from a copy and paste of an existing pipeline. So there can be gaps in the review process 
and the testing is usually inefficient. Specifically, when metrics is generated from a SQL-based tool, unit tests are frequently absent during the development phase. With the metric store, managing dataset definitions and implementations becomes centralized, and this makes testing and monitoring more straightforward. Each iteration of the underlying pipeline is safeguarded through unit testing and monitoring. Here is a sample code snippet for unit tests in our data pipeline. Similar to backend service, unit test validates the transform logic. And this, this ensures any changes in the data pipeline do not introduce errors, maintaining the integrity of our metrics. A new unit test is especially useful and important for negative testing. For example, for the logic that we add for defensive programming for edge cases and invalid input, unit tests help, help us easily simulate these scenarios without really generate the bad input from upstreams. And here is a sample code for data quality monitoring. The SQL code on the left-hand side is the template for creating duplicate checks, and the JSON file on the right-hand side is a configuration file where all duplicate checks are defined. An automation tool collects the template and configuration file and automatically generates duplicate alerts for all data sites defined in the configuration file. Besides duplicate alerts, we also have freshness alerts and completeness alerts generated by automation tool. And recently, we are also exploring to integrate with Databricks Lakehouse monitoring for uh, the data anomaly detection. By implementing a metric store, incremental processing, and rigorous texting and monitoring, we have effectively adjust the challenges of consistency, scalability, and reliability. Our approach ensures that we can deliver accurate, timely, and scalable business metrics for our stakeholders. Now, let's dive into a case study focusing on user eligibility calculation in the context of live as live test. As lip test is an experiment using Instacart to measure the incremental impact of an S campaign. Users are randomly assigned into two groups, the control group and the holdout group. So users in the control group can see the S associated with an experiment, and users assigned to a holdout group cannot see S. And later, we measure the sales from these two groups over time. So as you can see, in this case, we need to build a user eligibility table for the analysis. It stores the timestamps indicating when the user starts participating in the experiment. And this data is essential for accurate analysis and reporting of these metrics. Here is the diagram illustrating the ad serving and ad data processing flow. When a user visits Instacart, a request is sent from Instacart core application to ads server. And the ads associated with this request is generated in ads server and then returned to the, to the Instacart core app. In the meanwhile, different events are emitted from ads server during this process. And these events are collected by an event collector service here, and is sent to a data lake for further processing. So the input of this job is the event streams during assignment, while the output of this job is the dimension table of user experiment mapping with the first assigned timestamp. This data is shared across monitoring analysis and reporting for lead test. We will show how it's imp implemented with structured streaming and merge write provided by Databricks. 
Let's first take a look at the batch solution. In this code snippet, we use a simple SQL query to build the user eligibility table. As shown in this code, the input is the event table from upstream. And we select experiment ID, the experiment type, the variant, which represents the group that we met earlier, and the user ID, and then find the minimum of timestamp as the first assigned timestamp. So it's very straightforward to implement a best solution in this case. However, this approach faces all the challenges that we just described. And the processing window keeps increasing, making it very difficult to scale effectively. And to address these challenges, we implemented an incremental processing solution, which uses structured streaming and merge write. Here is the code for implementing a read stream function with structured streaming. So every time when the job runs, it automatically continues from the checkpoint in the input data. And there is no reprocessing required to pick up the late arrival event. And here is the code snippet for implementing the merge write. The job processes the input data, generates a local site for user eligibility, and then merge it with the user eligibility table. And as you can see, the merge key in this case is user ID, experiment ID, experiment tab, and variant. When there is no matched record on the merge key, a new record will be inserted into this table. And when there is, is a match record, the record will be updated with the smaller value of the first assigned timestamp. So this approach only reads new data. Since structured streaming provides a reliable way to always continue from the checkpoint. And by leveraging merge write, it also minimizes the data volume written to the output table every time. So with this incremental processing approach, we ensure the efficient and reliable data processing, maintaining the accurate and timely user eligibility metrics. Thank you for your attention.